Now, that was a great example that bowl games can still be fun. They can still be entertaining. They can still, you can actually have a coach who didn't make the playoff be happy after the game, who's accomplished as much as Dabo Sweeney. I thought that was a great sight uh, in Jacksonville between Clemson and Kentucky. We got Jason Priester here from allclemsontigers.com. Jason, you, of course, made it back. Had a good time in Jacksonville, hopefully. Uh, not one of the better bowl games I've ever covered, but at least we got an entertaining game, man. Yeah. No, nobody's going to sell that as uh, two of the top teams in the nation going at it, but it was, it was a fun game. It was entertaining. It was a bit of a slugfest early. And then the offense is really cut loose, uh, in the second half. And, uh, I gotta say again, I just find this very refreshing and Dabo is probably about as polarizing as any coach in college football. He's got his haters, he's got his uh, the folks that that love him to death. And I get it. I get it from both sides to a certain extent, although I have very little to criticize the guy about. I've picked on him a couple times for a few things that he said that I thought were kind of stupid, but that's you know two times in 10 years. I just love that that you can, as he has done many times this season. You can express that this is not our standard. We're not reaching expectations. We need to fix things. We need to address this. This is not acceptable. However, once you've lost those games, you can't bring them back. You have to play with what's going on right now. And you can choose to be miserable and say, you know, we didn't meet our expectations, so nothing's going to make us happy the rest of the year. Or you can play the rest of the season for what it's worth. Take a four and four team. As he mentioned, win the last five games, show that the team gave a damn, and they played against uh, teams like Notre Dame and others and took everybody seriously and took care of business the last five games. And then they go to a bowl game. And sure, again, it's not meeting their expectations or their standards of their program, but say, this is where we are right now. So we're going to be happy about winning the bowl game. Yeah, 100%, man. I, I've seen him catching some grief over some of those shots from the end of the game, particularly after the 52-yard field goal. But, man, th it would have been so easy for that team to check out when you're 4-4 four and four and you just lost to Miami and North Carolina State, but they didn't. They banded together, and they leaned on that defense. To, yeah, the offense still has a lot of work to do. But, man, I, I thought it was a genuine moment, it, and it truly shows how much he really cares about this team. There was a lot of guys that came back last year that didn't have to come back. They could have went on into the NFL. They came back. They had high expectations, like you said. Guys like Tyler Davis and, and Ruka Roro and, and throw Xavier Thomas in there if you want to. Um, you know, there, there are a handful of guys that could have went pro if they wanted to, but they came back. And, you know, I think part of that was being happy to send those guys out on the right note. And another part of that is, like you said, still having something to play for despite the fact we're not in the playoff. You know, we we, we want to end the season on this five-game winning streak. We want to go out, you know, on a positive note. And, and to me, the biggest thing of all, the offense actually went out and won a game for them. It's been the defense they've been leaning on, that offense. Everything's been such a struggle. And when they needed it, you know, that needing a touchdown with less than three minutes to go, they go 12 plays, 68 yards, punch it in. The offense does it wins the game for him. And, and I think it was a sign of some growth. And I think he was ecstatic to see it. How much has Cade Klubnick improved this season versus how much you think it would have been reasonable to expect him to improve? Because I got to say that I wasn't necessarily thinking this as they were putting up points in the fourth quarter, but throughout probably the first half into the second half, I'm thinking, how much has he really improved? Yeah, I don't know. Um, he is not where I thought he would be at this point. He, he's he got a lot of growth to do still yet. He needs to take a big jump from right now before the start of next season. Um, he still struggles to see the field, you know, completely scan the entire field. There, there was multiple times in that game Friday where, where there were guys, particularly Troy Stilato, is wide open down the field. He doesn't even get looked at. You know, I don't know if that's by design. I don't think it's by design because – there's a couple of times I've seen Stilato a little frustrated that he's not getting looked at. But there's not much of an effort being made to push the ball down the field. So, yeah, I, I do think that he's still got a lot of growing up to do. He's not where I thought he would be at this point. You know, I don't think he is where anybody thought he'd be at this point. Um, you know, 
How much does that have to do with having two different coordinators in his first two seasons? I have no idea. I don't know if that plays anything into it, but, you know, it, it's something he's dealt with since he's been there. But he definitely needs to take a big step between now, you know, and let's say fall camp next year because your offense goes as your quarterback goes pretty much. And I get it. Clemson still got issues on the offensive line. That's why they made a change at offensive line coach and, you know, I, I personally think the receivers have taken a little bit more grief than they've earned this year. But having said that, there's not a T. Higgins, there's not a um, Mike Williams or, or Justin Ross we saw during his freshman season. There's not one of those, you know, alpha guys in that wide receiver room. Um, so I think, you know, all of that plays a part. But Klubnik definitely still has some growing he's got to do. I, and I, I think that this is going to be a big offseason for him. Yeah, so the best two players on the offense over the last couple of seasons, for the most part, have been Phil Maffa and, of course, Will Shipley. So Clemson could come back next season with arguably the best one-two punch in college football, or they could be waving goodbye to both of them and having to replace both of them or something in between. So Will Shipley, we know he's dealing with a knee issue uh, and is undergoing an MRI and then we got Phil Maffa, who has been your guy for a couple of years and really tore it up down the stretch and had a huge bowl game. It was good to see him really come through uh, in the clutch with the the offense on his shoulders. Uh, so this this running back situation could could be wide open for a bunch of young players, or it could be these two studs coming back next year. Yeah, still kind of waiting on a decision from Shipley. His, his, he's already had the MRI, um, no structural damage, no surgery required, so he got some good news over the weekend. Um, I fully expect Moffa to be back next year. I've not heard a peep about him leaving. Um, but we'll see on Shipley. You know, he he's kind of said he's kind of said publicly that he's been back and forth, and it's a decision he struggled with and. You know, it's a decision that's going to have a big impact on that room. I think there are, there's some talented guys in that room that, that are waiting on opportunities. But if you get Shipley and Moffa back and, and you have a full offseason under new offensive line coach Matt Luke, and that could do that could work wonders for that running game. And talking about club, you get that running game going and that offensive line playing up to the standard that that or up to the level that the talent says it can be, because on paper they've got talent. They just haven't played to that, you know, on paper level. Let's put it that way. But, you know, if you, you get that offensive line up to where you think maybe they're capable of playing and you get both those running backs back, you know, that, that takes a lot of pressure. You get that running game going, that takes a lot of pressure off of um, Club Nick. Maybe that helps him out a little bit with his growth. A lot of folks on social media were having fun with taking shots of Matt Luke. And you know what the deal is there. You know, anybody can make any expression and people can make fun of it to basically say, oh, this is what I'm inheriting. This is what I got to deal with kind of deal. You know, I, I saw some of that too, but he he looked genuinely happy on the sideline after that field. We were down on the field after the game, man. I got, he, he, he looked genuinely ecstatic. Um, you know, I, I've seen some, I've seen some chatter online about, you know, how, well, you know, Matt Luke wasn't able to do anything with that offensive line. Come on, man. It's, they, they had two weeks of practice. You know, he he's still in the evaluation process where guys are playing in that bowl game. They might not be playing, you know, come game one next year. They might do some moving around. He, he still got a lot of evaluation to do with those guys. Um, Yeah, I don't buy anything into that. I, I think it. I think there were only a, probably a handful of jobs Matt Luke's coming back, getting back into coaching. For. And I think Clemson was one of those few jobs that kind of aligns with his values. Let's him, you know, he's, he stepped away from the game for two years so he could spend more time with his family. And Davos Sweeney's big on ensuring, making sure that his coaches, you know, spend have enough family time and all that. It, kids are always around and stuff. So I, I'm not buying any of that stuff, man. I think I think Matt Luke's going to be fine. I think I think that offensive line's going to be fine. You know, giving him the proper amount of time to work with him.